What is this is like the least deserved uh, video series in history. What makes you say that? Um, I think the initial interest was probably because I was poised to do well and I didn't do well. There's a market for that story of like the lovable loser or something like that, but I don't think within that trope, the person who is the lovable loser probably is ever enjoying that experience. Like I remember watching this video in the US 2000 rowing eights team and they were supposed to go there and kick butt and they had problems because whatever, the team didn't gel and they went and didn't place and it was like super bad and everyone was like not having a good time being on the camera and I was yeah. like, man, that sucks for you guys. And now I am you guys, so. Event one on the men's side, heavy handstand reverse fran. Chandler Smith has failed a few times on these handstand walks. Chandler rides an emotional wave in competition. If he starts things off on a bad note, that can mess with him mentally for the rest of the weekend. Number one seed coming in out of quarterfinals. He still finishes in three minutes and 31 seconds. <laughs> That's the idea too, like this is a fast, fast team. But that might be closer to 18th place, Joel. It was good, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, that was more or less the kind of feeling I was going for. As an athlete, you're super in tune to your body and you know when things like aren't right, and I knew I was not in a good spot physically. It was way harder than practice. I'm sure. <laughs> all right. This is the Natick High Track where we do all of our field and like track and field activities. So Granite Games is going down to the field. So like we've been practicing a few things out here um, just to simulate like the, the feel for, you know, how handstand walking or doing squats on turf and everything is going to be because it's a little bit different. How's it feel? What's up? You smell yourself and make that face? No, no, I was seeing if there oh. was a hair. Okay. This one's a fast one. Amanda only beat me by a minute and a half last time on this three minute workout. So it's good. It's like 50%. This fine. I should do very well with it today. 10 seconds. I keep going like spaceship to the moon and I stick to the script. I'm not trying to find a way to make a better way to get ahead. I can't miss. I got to move it. All I got to do is flick my, flick my wrist. Like a rat on a bike go from room. My dog. I keep going like spaceship to the moon and I stick to the script. I'm not trying to find a way to make a better way to get ahead. I can't miss. I got to move it. All I got to do is make out of the top of the morning. Some feelings I wish I'd ignore. I'm so depressed like it's not an important. The pain won't last. It's gonna be more for my number, I don't quit Even if it's all I get Taxes if it's all I spit Go but cancel all my trips Put a pause on my drip Cause I'm dad, I'm off my script I feel like I pray I don't slip I 380 and caught my grip mm -hmm. I take the will cause I'm gonna drip I say love so I can see the hip crease I'm not afraid to know what? my fiance You're doing great I'll stop and Practice for the open communication you need for a marriage 21, good job. Going to the moon, I stick to the script. I've been trying to find a way to make a better way to get ahead. I can't miss. I gotta move it. All I gotta do is flick my wrist. Well done. That was so good. What was it? 224. Okay. Yeah, okay. Three minutes of fun. So much fun. Somehow, Amanda did it a minute faster. And trust me, I was like looking back at the tapes too. She just moves at the speed of light and so well. I think he's gonna do really well. He's very, he's, he can be in his head and I mean, as he should be, it's not, you know, you can't think you're gonna win everything. That's not a good mindset, but he's, he's tough on himself, which makes him a good athlete, but these should be really well, good workouts for him and everything. Last year he wanted longer workouts and we got them this year. So I think he's gonna do, I think he's gonna do super well with it. It's gonna be fun. It's fun to like practice them against him, but it's gonna be fun to watch too. What's the game plan here? Um, I guess I need to do the last handstand walk unbroken. Jesse did unbroken. Uh, I think that's where the most time is to be gained or lost. Uh, but I did this before I came down. So hopefully I can be as strong as her. Ready? Hey! Let's go! Back! Yo, once again I'm back around. Uh, rushing back inside. Uh, haters reconcile. Uh, 
I'm so black and proud, first class, sick as now Feet all in the eye, everybody looking down Everybody get red when you drown, huh? Look at me up, I'm putting it down, you picking it up Checking the models, they want us to go to college just so we can be stuck Go to school to make a living, or teach yourself to make a fortune Common sense, welcome to the apocalypse, I'm one of the horsemen I don't need your endorsement, I don't need reinforcement Giving you your last warning, cause I'm at my prime Far? Do you detect something different? If you look inside my head, would you say something missing? If you could give all your riches just to say the word, would you risk it? These politicians so old can't tell if the dead where they living. Better ask Kathy Griffin. You know I like to raise stakes. We was always taught to hit the gas. We ain't even know they made breaks. We control our own fate. Watch your dreams take shape. Try to keep us out. We gon' freak out. Turn this bitch water cake. I don't need your mandate. Don't need you to elevate. I'm about to detonate, cause I'm at my prime Yeah I'm at my I'm at my prime Said I'm at my prime We at our prime Hey Hey We at our prime Yeah I'm at my prime Five more. <coughs> 17, 18, 19, 20, last one, 21. Heads up. Got it. Almost halfway. Three more yards, half. Half. <laughs> Come on, kick back up. You're done after this. Let's go. Good. Five yards. Last three. One more. Three or four. Didn't do it. Oh. I still think I can. Yeah, last one I'm broken. Yeah. It's smart. You don't want to stop. This will be Quarter fast enough. You what? This is still will be fast enough. Do you think you can do your thrusters unbroken if you break on the handstand wall? Um. Yeah, I think so. Because you only had five, and it looked like you were fine. <laughs> it was not fine. Okay, well, I said looked. It looked like you were fine. I think on game day I'll do it. I'm yeah. <sighs> for, at least for me, there hasn't really ever been a time or series of workouts where I didn't perform better uh, than when I tested things. I guess part of me was like, it's it's going to be there because it's always there, and, and I believe that more than I believe that um, not feeling well was going to... I guess kind of be a drawback. It had been feeling like it was going to be my uh, best season. I've had the whole like games 2022 thing as for the last decade, that's been something I'd wanted to do. I'd made improvements on the areas where I thought I needed to make improvements, uh, mostly the, like having to do with lifestyle stuff and things outside of the gym. Um, I was paying more attention to all that. I was sleeping more than ever. I was still working out hard and I'd had good results, was getting good feedback from open end quarters and daily training and stuff um, and like personal metrics so everything was trending in the right direction until it wasn't. I mean I can only assume where his head's at and knowing Chandler is probably not in the best spot right now but hopefully he just kind of lets go of it and kind of moves on. Um, I mean it happens. You know, sometimes you get those events that just like don't go as planned or no reps. I don't know what happened or the situation, but I mean, I'm always rooting for him as a friend that I want him to do well. And 
hopefully he'll come back to the list and come fired up and build some energy and momentum going into tomorrow and go from there. It's not worth swinging for the fences on anything right now. Um, just like need some consistent point totals. That's that's what I went for. as um, expected and didn't like go for anything um, that I may have had like I wanted to only do stuff that I was certain with I stayed power cleaning the whole time like just very much wanted to operate in the space of um, situations that like I felt like I could control because the previous work I kind of got out of control and maybe a little bit of me was like even though it wasn't like a, a super breathy piece um, just knowing that I was like not feeling as good as I should um, was kind of like making me like try to get ahead of any more spiral into the situation. What were we doing? Power? Squatting? I wasn't watching. The whole three? Yeah. Thank you. Kind of taking stock of myself after the lift. I was like that evening, I was like, something's definitely wrong. I don't want to like talk about it, but I could tell I'm not like operating at 100% capacity. I was like wheezy and like wasn't breathing well. And uh, I didn't really talk to. I didn't even talk to Ben about that as a reality, but I did tell Jesse um, that uh, my fiance, uh, maybe the wife, I guess at the time this comes out, I was like, this is, uh, this is probably not gonna end up going super well and just be ready for that because um, we're in this together and this is also gonna end up affecting you. I don't know, like just like when you know that you're plugged in and you're operating, hitting on all cylinders, you also know when you're not. And, that's uh, it's not something you're gonna like broadcast, but I think it was also maybe starting to affect um, how I was like going about talking to folks and everything too. Cause I don't know, you just feel like uh, you're kind of stuck at that point. He's 18th right now. Oh man, um, that's a lot of pressure, but there's a lot of, um, I think the bigger question we should look at is how many points out he is, because placement doesn't really matter, points out matters. And he's a home run hitter, and I think he's coming in with a vengeance today, and so I'm expecting big things. I'm on the individual, I'm on the wrong thing altogether right now, and I'm pulling it up. Okay, so Chandler is at 109 points, He's got to make up like 65 points, 63 points right now. That's a lot of pressure, dude. That's a big comeback. He's not in 18th, he's in 13th. He's fine. It's fine, there's plenty of workouts. There's 400 points up for grabs right now. If he takes top five in the next four workouts, he should be fine. He's been in the second heat. What's the pros and cons of that? You know, the... Pros, I think, sometimes is it just allows you to like not think about pacing or worrying about who's beside you because like you don't have another option. Like you know the top guys are in that third heat, so you need to go out and execute flawlessly and literally just go for it. Like there's no, you can't think about it, you can't be concerned about what's next, the next event, whatever. Like you need to go out and attack it with a purpose and. I feel like the same kind of situation I did yesterday where like it doesn't matter like just it doesn't matter if you're winning the heat you literally just keep trying to beat I feel like for me I try to beat myself not so much always as other people like I feel like you're your biggest critic and you got to be able to beat that so hopefully today he pulls it out and can bring out some fire just not one place better than He's got a unique challenge that he's probably not very used to a little bit where he's got two workouts that should line up well for him, but 
he doesn't go up, get to go up against the other big boys. He's in the middle heat, which is a really unique challenge in terms of um, really putting your head down, putting the blinders on, and doing you. Because normally, it's pros and cons. You get to know where the top guys are, and you know if you're in third or fourth place, you're probably gonna end up in third or fourth place. Maybe someone middles you a little bit. Right now, he has no idea where his time will line up when he finishes, so it's a different type of challenge, but it can also serve you really well if you use it the right way. good until it didn't. I think you can gut it out for a while, but there comes a point where like, you're just not getting enough oxygen in, and then that's when stuff gets goofy. I think after the muscle ups, I, that's when like, it was starting to settle in. You take a deep breath and like nothing's coming in, and when your heart rate's elevated, I, I, I guess it's tough to put into words what's happening, um, except for like, you just really feel a lot of like, constriction, and you can breathe more, but nothing additional happens with like from those breaths so it's just unproductive and then you know like because you can't breathe you don't recover as quickly and then because you're not recovering as quickly like you can't breathe i don't know it seems like it just kind of goes more and more out of control and you can like try to slow down but you're still racing so you have to like keep moving fast to stay ahead of it which just digs you further and uh either like either take a bad placing because you stop trying or you take a bad placing because you just like completely um, melt down and that's like where the dumbbells I think I did like singles or something on and that's not normally how those would go or how that went in training and stuff but what do you do? <laughs> Probably need my inhaler, if I'm being honest. Uh, exactly. yeah. You yeah, it's up in there. I can like walk, it's just pissy in a minute. When I first started in this space, like all the people who followed me were folks that I knew and like I could, we could like, we were friends or I'd had, I'd seen them face to face or had, we had an expectation of seeing each other face to face. So we could be honest and maybe I could like talk about how things were actually going because people were going to believe me. And there's no way I would be able to convince 250,000 people who I don't talk to uh, of anything other than what they're already thinking. And if even if I could, like, is the time and energy worth putting into that? Um, worth doing it because there's always going to be an opposite reaction too. Like if I put that out and you have people say like, oh, he's just making this up. It's not a real thing. Like he didn't have asthma. You can't be in the military with asthma. Like it's all made up. Like I'm not going to go down that road to try to tell people really anything. Like that's as like a general rule, folks say stuff. Just got to kind of take it, I guess. I told Ben, I was like, hey man, this is what's going on. I can keep going. I know we're trying to get the last chance qualifier spot and that's like maybe reachable at this point. Um, but also like from an effort standpoint, I, I don't know how hard I can push competitively. So I would really like to quit. And he told me I couldn't quit. And it's, it's like a dang if you do, dang if you don't situation. Cause if you quit, then everyone's gonna make up their own stories anyways. And you know, like, there's, they'll be like, oh, he quit, he wasn't in shape, like blah, 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 but then you show up, and then you also prove them, prove those same people right, or that same, like, uh, there's still like that same, I guess, reaction from people, so there's, when you're in a tough situation like that, um, from a character standpoint, I guess there's a right answer, um, but maybe not so much competitively. You're not gonna get any extra points by trying to be a good guy or whatever. He's banged up. So he's gonna have to battle. He's banged up. He had like an asthma attack, overheated, can't breathe, still can't breathe. It's been 
an hour since this event, he still can't catch breath. That was the last one. There's no, that's the, he's got to go on this one. So, we got to get him ready. Let's see if we can get him ready. Take some. I have something. You want to take another Zyrtec? That's not going to do anything. Okay. <clears throat> Try to keep it under control. What's up? Just try to keep it under control so it can get ahead of you. And it's going to it's going to be a good management. Alright. Take the first half slow. Always in my bag, carrying you with class. Focus on the future, never worry about the past. Instead of chilling, why you hanging out at last? I'll admit it's kind of sad. You can never do it like me. Ain't nobody do it like me. You know I'm the boss. Chandler Smith trying to open up the lead here on Deluga. Chandler Smith still going on the rig, holding that lead over Dylan Henning. And ladies and gentlemen, Chandler Smith on that final run. Dylan Hamtown looking to finish it out in lane number 10. Hamming will shut it down for the night. 90 seconds. Chan. You okay? Okay. Medic? Asthma, yeah. I don't handle it. You're an You inhaler? Do you want your inhaler? Did you have asthma as a kid? Yeah. To get into the army, like, and part of my training, like, actually, how I started doing CrossFit was I wanted to be in good enough shape where if I had an asthma attack, it would, I could still, like, make it through the training because you're not allowed to have the preventative medicine um, as you're going through basic training. So like, as I was looking for ways to train, it's how I found CrossFit and I used to do just dumb stuff to like initiate asthma attack and then just be like, all right, like now that you have one, run a mile or something like that. Um, but yeah, that's like on the edges of things that you're supposed to and not supposed to do. So that's not as good of a story. Hey bud, I'm so fucking proud of you, man. Okay, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. So so proud of you, man. It sounds like a goofy, apocryphal story, but I remember leaving my dad. He was playing for the Cardinals. He's like a backup fullback. He's nobody, like whatever. But there's people who just want autographs from an NFL player and they stick around. We wanted to go home and he went and, like, and signed everybody's stuff. That's story one. And then there was a CrossFit athlete that I came across. I guess I was in college and we were at the same baseball game and I went and asked them for an autograph or like a picture and I had a tough time like getting my phone out and they were like, hey, this is taking too long, I gotta go. And how the occasion when my dad made those people feel and how that occasion made me feel made that be like something I said I was never gonna make somebody like feel like they weren't important enough for a bit of my time. I think it's always important to make time for people. Those moments are more important than probably any of the rest of the, th the stuff that's going on on the field. 
you gotta respect people as human beings if they're taking time and energy out of their days to come and approach you and it's important to them, then you can take 10 seconds to make it important to you and not lose sight of like the overall mission. Hey, wait right here. Thank you. Welcome. I'll see you in the morning. Yeah, chill tonight. Dude, I'm so proud of you, man. That was a really cool thing to cool thing to be a part of. Yeah, man. Cool man. see it manifests like a like a complete asthma attack so he just can't even take a deep breath so is that something that he's experienced before twice two other times uh the trail run in 2020 we actually had the same medic at granite as we did out there aromas is pretty dusty and i had a really really bad attack out there um, that ended up working with like the medical guys to help get under control. The Spartan World Championships in 2019, so that's the year before that one, I had one that was so bad that I ended up having to pull out of the competition. Uh, we went to Dubai in 2018. We had a desert run. That was another situation. I think 2017 TFX. I got there like that morning, like two or three or whatever, and then we turned around and did a run, and I was like completely useless. I, I wrote this down too, and I was like journaling. Like there's definitely times where it's like, you messed this up. Like this was in your control. You didn't control the controllables. That's your fault. Um, and I'm also like, I think going forward, you need to treat uh, preventative medicine for asthma as much as I can. Like treat that as a controllable. It's not. It's not like a reasonable excuse to just say like, oh, that's just like happens sometimes. There's a, a ruck march in 2015 that sticks out in my head. Um, so I was like, what if they like, what if they kick me out? What if I get in trouble? Um, even though it, my asthma was documented by the army at that time, but just like you get worried when you have a bad performance. Pretty, that's probably the closest I felt to like now, I guess from an emotional standpoint of like people are gonna make their assumptions about this result and ignore the like general body of work. And what does that mean for my continued ability to participate in this space? Like that was a, uh, a similarly like scary time where you're like maybe you gotta change what you're doing completely. At that point, it's on the last day, the last events, not anything really aerobic or if you choose to go slow and it's also like a wheelhousey type of event, you're gonna hurt on five, but you know it's coming so you can stay ahead of it better than you did for event three. I guess I felt like kind of locked in at that point. I knew I wasn't going to quit. I was going to finish the competition even if I had two more times that ended up like event three, like you're already in it at that point. I assume I'll be prouder that I didn't quit. And that's what I'm maybe also I was kind of being told, like you'll be proud that you didn't quit and that you kept going, even if it was super embarrassing and put you in a situation where you're not going to really ever explain yourself out of it might as well like just you know say like you're grateful for the situation like even trying to find a positive within the whole experience because it happened and there's nothing useful to be gained from being negative about it reality is like for me to continue doing my job, I gotta figure out how to be Chandler Smith CrossFit Games athlete again. I want to be able to provide, and that's like an important piece of what being a husband and father means to me. So um, even in this moment where I am Chandler Smith, middle of the road semifinals athlete, like all the energy and time I have for that is like, I guess dedicated towards trying to figure out how to be Chandler Smith Games athlete again, because I wanna continue to honor the work that's been put in by trying to overcome, I guess, some of the things that are keeping me from operating at the level that I think I'm capable of.
wish I had more cool stuff for you guys to say. I'm sure none of this is even going to be usable unless you want to hear the story of the 11th best guy at Granite Games. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Hey, I, don't, I don't have the answers. I probably don't even have the right questions. But together we can ask them. And what only thing maybe I, I do feel confident, I do know, is I've said it before, and I'm not just throwing it out there, who you are as a person. Forget about the athletic field, but who you are as a person is incredible. You're incredible. You're a role model for so many, Jan. I think a role model is the best thing that anyone could, anyone could be labeled as. Hey, and what I'm excited about is when the athlete catches up to that person. And it's gonna happen. method you have of improvement and you can genuinely say you gave it your absolute best shot and you gave it like time to try things out and all the all these sort of things if you still fail then it's like okay like all right maybe it's time to move on but I don't think I've uh I've quite done that yet so I'll keep joking Games 2023. I'm happily surprised, almost, as to how well they are already moving together. I'm scary excited for how that's going to be after a few months of this. This is crazy.